Hi, our lesson this week is going to take us, we're going to get transported to the beach. And while you're, while you're working on this, pretend like you're hearing the roll of the waves and you're feeling the sun on your body and you're smelling the, the sea water. Um, and we're going to make, obviously, a, a flamingo. Now, flamingos are pink because of their diet. They aren't born pink. Uh, but they turn pink, their feathers t uh, take on a pink uh, cast from eating so much shrimp and algae that's pink in color. And so the pinker your you see a, a flamingo, the healthier it is. It's got a good steady diet. Uh, so we are going to use a number of different supplies on this. Um, first of all, you need your, your Sharpie and a, and a pencil and eraser. You need your set of oil pastels. You need a set of watercolor paints. A couple of different brushes, kind of medium size will work on this one. We don't have a lot of details on it. Um, a bowl or container of water, some paper toweling. Get that out for me. Okay, paper toweling. Uh, you need glue. This raffia ribbon. And you need scissors to cut that into strips for your cabana roof. Okay, so let's get started. So let's get started. You'll notice that we started this drawing by making a big number two, okay? And then made the body of the flamingo and then hooked it back here. So the main shape is that of a number two, okay? So let's start filling in some of the other parts of our flamingo. And uh, we'll start with the beak. They have a nice big beak for catching those shrimp and, and the algae. And then we'll do the eye. And the eye itself is an oval with a little black ball in it. Now we'll have to remember that when we paint, the end of the beak is going to be black. Okay? And then this will be kind of white and pink. Okay, so let's make the wing. So you want to do a V shape in the body. And then we're going to do bumpy lines, also known as scalloped lines, for the end to simulate feathers. And then we're going to take that same idea and we're going to do make the tail. Now again, you're drawing in pencil and then going to trace our usual thing, right? All right, so we've got the upper body done. And uh, flamingos oftentimes stand on just one foot. And so that's what we're going to have our fl flamingo doing. So we're going to... Oops, I'm running out of juice in my marker. Let's see if this one's better. Oh, yes. That one's better. And then we're going to take this V idea again and make three toes. There you go. And then the back leg, we're going to make at an angle and you won't see the toes on that, okay? So that's our, our simple 
flamingo and now let's put you know we want this to be on the edge of the of the ocean with the beach and a cabana behind it and all that kind of good stuff so the first thing that we want to do is about halfway down on your paper I guess I'll put a little bit here we're going to make our horizon line and remember the horizon line is where the the land or sea in this case and the sky seem to meet so let's work on our ocean we want to give you know a little bit of um, movement right and we can do that through using curving lines looks like there's ripples So we want the effect that the, our flamingo is standing on the sand, but having some uh, water, some of the, the leftover waves uh, kind of going. And then we're going to make another curvy line. And making that wave and then down here we're going to have some sand okay okay so then let's I'm going to turn this around and you might want to do that too let's let's make a cabana and a cabana is basically it's just a small kind of hut like building so we're going to make like a pretend like this is a rectangle okay and then we'll do some doors pretty wide doors so if it's a nice day you can prop the doors open so we'll make that door there now the interesting thing about it looks like it's a rectangle tangle but actually it's a a um, like a, a tube like a, a a cylinder that's round sort of like this toilet paper roll right um, so it's kind of a tube and then there is a thatched roof on top of it so we're going to put our cabana cap on And that curved line kind of gives it the sense that it's rounded, that the whole structure is rounded. There we go. Very simple shapes. But I think this is a fun project. Okay, so now we're going to further back in the distance. There might be some bushes or some uh, brush so we're going to make that green and then as we work our way up we're going to have a few fluffy clouds in the sky now again you can alter this as you know with these lessons you can make this your own so if you want to make a sun you can do that there we go so what you can do is pause the video and trace over it with your marker and then while you're doing that or after you're doing that then you can clean up some of your pencil marks because we are going to be watercoloring these so as you know the water the the um, pencil marks will show through the watercolor so we need to just clean it up a little bit
All right, so I've got this all cleaned up. Now make sure that you wipe off all of the crumbs from your eraser. All right, now we're ready to get out our oil pastels. And we're going to use, if you recall, the wax resist method on these to give texture throughout, the, uh, throughout your work. And so down here where it's going to be uh, the sand, we're just going to make dots like grains of sand. So just random dots. And your set has two or three different colors of brown. So you can use all of them to fill in some of your dots. Now, remember that oil pastels smudge. So try to avoid getting your hand, side of your hand in it. And then we've got kind of this gold that we can put in there to fill in some more. There we go. Okay, now we're going to work our way up and we're going to get our white oil pastel and we're going to make loop de loop lines. So a loop de loop line, let me get a piece of paper out of here since you can't see it while I'm doing it. It's like that. Okay. So but we're doing it with white so you can't really see it, but make sure you push down. Just do loop-de-loop -loop on this one. Again, it's through line that we are getting a sense of motion, right? And then we'll do another loop-de-loop -loop in this upper strip. Okay, now we're going to take our darker blue and we're working our way up. And if it's easier for you not to smudge by turning it upside down, that works too. And then we're going to make wave lines. Do them random. Don't want them to be all in one line. Now, as you recall, you will then paint over these and they will show up through your watercolor. Let's do it one in between. There you go. Okay. Now we're working up again and we're going to grab our white and we're going to just make marks with our white on the bird's body, the straight ones on the body to get the, the look of feathers. So you want to have them going in the direction that the feathers would. Now the tough thing about this is it's hard to see where you've been, but, and then in the wing, we're going to make those feathers a little different looking. And so we're going to do rounded marks. Okay. So we're working our way up, 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 up. So we're going to grab our green. 
And if you get some, if you see that you have darker colors or other colors on your oil pastel, you can just take your fingernail and scrape them off. Now, the, the cabana will be uh, shades of brown, so I'm going to get out this kind of reddish brown, and we're going to do vertical lines. Up and down. And then we're going to do them kind of like an umbrella there and then we'll do our darker brown for lines on the doors so we can distinguish our doors a little bit okay this is all very loose don't don't belabor it whoops all right and that's all for our oil pastels So when you're done with that, we're going to pull out our watercolor set and we're going to paint the bird first. So we need to have just a, a medium sized brush. Don't, I don't want you to get too fussy with these paintings. So don't have to use real small brushes. You should have your uh, paper toweling, your water, and your paint sets. So I'm just gonna double check to make sure my brush is in good order. Okay, and then I'm going to go for a really nice pink. And I really want a lot of pigment. So we really wanna stir up our pink. And then we'll start painting. Of course, I get a fuzz piece on my first brush stroke. Okay, I want a little more pink. Now, this piece around the eye is going to stay white. I'm going to try a little darker color of pink. Can't seem to get enough. So you have to play around a little bit with your paints to get it. Okay, I like that one better. And you can just go over your original pink. It'll blend. Some of my feathers are showing up. That's why I wanted to go with the darker pink so that they would show up a little bit, give it some texture.
you want some more texture, you can just pat your wet paint with your um, paper toweling, and it makes some cool, some cool looking texture. You can do the same thing on the straight up and down and gives it some interesting texture. Okay, now, interestingly, the flamingo's legs are also pink. So you can use the same brush if it's a little bigger. You can just go paint sideways. Pull the paint toward you. So I'm making my legs just a little darker pink just to make it, you know, more interesting. And I'm going to do the use that same dark pink to do a little bit on the beak. And that's more like a splotch of pink. And then leave some white there. And and I'm going to get a smaller brush and paint the end of the beak black. There we go. Blow off all of the, the crumbs. Okay, and we'll start we'll start painting up here and then come down. So we're going to do the cabana, and we're going to do a light brown and then a dark brown. So we'll try that light brown. see how we like this. Got another piece of lint in there. I think I'm going to go with a little more vibrant color. Yeah, that's better. Oh, see, you can play around with your colors. Some people like to leave, have a little piece of paper, blank paper beside them, so you can try them. I decide to live dangerously and just try it right on my artwork, particularly with watercolors. So see how that brown oil pastel is still showing through. back over here and make it a little bit darker. There we go. And then I'm going to use the same color for the roof.
you can hear in the background, but my dogs are singing the blues. They miss me. All right, now I'm going to use a different colored brown, a darker brown for the door. Poke the paint around in that area by the tail. All right, I'm liking how that looks. All right, so I'm going to turn my paper uh, to be able to get at the spaces I want to paint a little more easily and uh, check your your watercolor uh, your, your water for your that you're dipping your brush in if you need to if it's getting too muddy looking uh, you need to get some fresh so I am going to use this kind of lime green because it's kind of a beachy color, you know, pinks and aquas and yellows and lime green. You can use whatever color green you want. Got this little spot over here. All right, we're to our to our blues. I saved those. For last so we'll start back down here and I want to use a light blue in the stripes where my curly cues are or let's say a medium blue so I'm going to use several different colors of blue because as you know if you've been to the ocean that there are different colors of blue based on the sun hitting it as well as the how deep the water is I'm just not having good luck getting my oil pastels to uh, show up I hope you did a better job than I did Oh well, it's not a loss if if it doesn't work for you either. We have nice blue there. Just no white. Okay, so we're going to do this other. The second stripe here.
Okay, so now I'm going to pick out with this area and this area, I think I'm going to pick out kind of an aqua blue. Um, I'll try this one. You know, I have a different blue. Oh dear. My cat wants to come up to say hi. Hi, sweetheart. Hi, sweetheart. Okay, you can see. You can see my little cat. Isn't she cute? Yes. Her name is Wahua, which is Chinese for artist. And she's purring because she's very happy whenever she gets some love. Say hi, Wawa. Say hi to them. There you go. Okay, we got to get back to work here. And you need to stay off my artwork. There you go. Let me make sure that our work is lined up enough. I'm going to dig into another set of paints to see how this looks. You can use whatever color you of blue that you want. You can mix some colors together if you want. That's also fine. Then I think I'm going to use a little darker blue because the water will be a little bit deeper. cats are not getting along very well in the background so if you hear hissing they're just chasing after each other and being a little grumpy kiddos let's get along
between the legs in this little triangle area. Okay, so now we've got the, the blue sky to do. And again, you can use whatever color of blue you want. I would suggest that it's, you know, maybe a little darker blue. Just for some contrast.
Okay, now what we want to do is let this dry. And in the meantime, I will show you how to, so we're going to set this off to the, we're going to make a, some add some more tough texture to this by gluing on some of this raffia ribbon. And so we want to measure how long our, our roof is. Pull out, and these don't all have to be the same length, but just cut, oh, I don't know, maybe five or six. And we're going to glue them on to our thatched roof. Art becomes much more interesting when you can think of ways to add texture and layers. What do I have here? One, two, three, four, five. We'll do another one. Six. Okay. So I need to see if my glue is working. If not, I'll put you on hold and go find another bottle. Nope, this seems like it's working. Okay, so what you want to do is put some of the glue on the underside of your ribbon and then just kind of lay it along and then I'm going to put some more on this edge. Excuse me, on this end. There we go. There you go. And we're just going to work our way. Now this one I look like looks like I made it too long. So I'm going to cut that, cut it shorter. Like I said, they don't have to all be the same length. A glue stick would probably work on this as well if that's easier for you to use. So we want to let some of the painting and the oil pastel uh, show through, right? But we want to put these on top to give it a more realistic look. So just work around from that center point up at the top. Trim up as you need. And then you might have to go back and push it down a little bit between now and the time that it dries. A little still a little bit long so I'm going to put it off to the side a little bit and make it a little bit shorter the next time I cut your hands are going to have glue on them so be prepared to wash them after you're done with this project. Oh, that's looking fun. And I've got one more piece here and I think this will work. There we go. And we're all finished. Good job. Now we can just look at our work and pretend like we're at the beach. <laughs>